We've done it! We've passed 50 subscribers. Thank you all so much for subscribing to this channel. If you were subscribed to this channel before the making of this video and your subscriptions are public, all of your names will show up on here who have subscribed. Thank you, everyone, for subscribing to the YouTube channel. And if you're not subscribed to this channel, push the red button down below and turn it gray. I promise you, you won't be disappointed. I try to upload videos every week explaining different things on how to use special Christmas lighting. And if you don't even want to know how to use it, subscribe in every winter you can see the lights in action. So thank you again for getting me past 50 subscribers, and now let's get started with the video. Hey everyone, thanks for watching Bridgeport's Brightest Lights. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to use projectors in your light show to make your light show just a little bit more cool and add more detail to it. So, let's get started. So one thing you'll obviously need to run a projector is a Raspberry Pi. Most people's light shows run off of a Raspberry Pi, so if you have a Raspberry Pi that runs your light show, you can use the same one that runs your controllers and stuff if you do have one. Um, uh, or you could use a separate Raspberry Pi if you wanted to, or if you don't use Raspberry Pis at all in your light show. There might be other ways that you could set up projectors. But in this video, I'm just going to be showing you how to use Raspberry Pis. And I'm going to show you how to use one that is also running a controller and how to use it separate from a uh, controller. And then I also, because you obviously need a projector, have a projector here. So, I'm not sure how much this costs. I think it may have cost like $200. It is uh, from, uh, I think it's called DJ, uh, DJR. Um, it has it came as a kit. There's a bunch of cords and stuff in it But this is the main projector and this is the projector I used last year in the light show that um, uh, showed the videos for the intro for the light show and then uh, um, a Polar Express video and then National Lampoon's clips So it allows you to tilt the picture up and down with this slider then focus in and out And I think this one can go up to a hundred feet away maybe for its biggest picture and it is a very nice picture um it worked great but just one thing i don't quite like about it is it can't go that bright and if you do change the brightness settings on here to make it brighter it turns the screen white for some reason and if you change it darker then it turns the screen black so i have to keep it in the middle so you have a power power comes in right there and then you have tons of different plugins right here you can use a HDMI cable which is what I used last year you can use a USB stick a VGA cord I'm pretty sure there's also audio in and audio out so I think this one is audio in and this one's audio out then there's also a spot for an SD card and that's about it and then uh, there's also a speaker right here I think that is and then there's a fan and then there's also this little screw thing that you can turn to make it tilt the picture up or down like that so I'll leave that all the way down there so this is now all connected up I have the projector plugged in it's not on the red light is on so it's off HDMI cable going through here through this connector into the Pi and I have the Pi plugged in um, and I'll also be showing you the different ways you can use audio with the Pi because you could just use it let's say you have this in the garage and you have a really long uh, HDMI cable that's one way you could do it um, if you want to you could send the audio through this HDMI cable and put an FM transmitter in the box if the projector is closer to the road that way the um, FM transmitter is closer to the road so people can get better range and then you can get the audio out of here so you could send it through here then send it out there but I didn't really need to do that because I had the Raspberry Pi in the same exact um, enclosure as this so well, um, this one does not use audio at all because I was running the Raspberry Pis in um, master remote mode. I'll explain that in a little bit. And I was just using the first Raspberry Pi to um, send the audio out. So this is now all plugged in and the Raspberry Pi is booting. And it, the, it is connected through Wi-Fi to this little Wi-Fi booster that I have right here. And this is hardwired into my router. So now let's go on to the computer and take a look at what the settings are. 
So we are now on a brand new folder of X Lights, demo X Lights, and I'm going to be showing you first how to set up the projector in X Lights before anywhere else. Um, now I did forget to mention this, but you can also use this video does also apply if you want to use a TV in your light show because I have heard of people they like to use TVs or monitors or different things in their windows to make a uh, sort of projector like um look and you can also do that with the HDMI port just plug except the HDMI cord into a TV the settings are basically the same though so first what you're gonna want to do is uh, you're gonna want to add an Ethernet and this is um setting it up on the Raspberry Pi most of the time when you set up a light show you don't need to set up the Raspberry Pi in here but when you're using a projector you do have to set it up on there so I'll just call this our Pi um, uh, projector so I don't I don't want to give it a description we'll leave it active and we'll set the vendor to FPP because it is through Falcon player and then the model you're gonna want to set to a virtual matrix then you can also select all of this auto stuff this will make it setting up, up easier and then you should put in the IP address of the uh, Raspberry Pi that will be running on. If you don't know this, you could just click um, multicast and leave it like that and then change it later. But when you do know it, uncheck that and then put the IP address in. I know mine and mine is 192.168.1.104. And let me just change that. So leave the protocol to E131 and then set your start universe. So if you already had lights set up, before this on other universes and let's say your lights ended on universe 15 set this on a start set the start universe to universe 16 but since I have no lights in this demo folder just set it to one so that's everything on the controller side so you can hit save and then we'll have to go on to the actual FPP in a few minutes to set up the settings on there and then you can come into layout and then click new create new matrix and then just drag out the matrix and basically when you're setting up a projector in X lights X lights thinks that you're just using a matrix made out of pixels except a really dense one so you want to try and make the resolution as low as possible whilst so it, so it still looks good because if it gets too high your render times will literally take forever last year for a four minute video it took a total of five minutes to render it without even any lights already onto it so what I used last year and you can go and uh, b back and look at the videos of the light show up here I'll link videos up there at the projector I used a resolution that was even lower than regular HD but it still looked amazing from the road and this resolution um they have to set in um, you can come over here and set it up make sure the direction is for the matrix is set for horizontal uh, this is a very crucial part if you don't set the starting location right in the direction the video could be flipped or upside down um i know for my matrix so it has to be set the direction has to be horizontal and the starting location has to be top left but if um uh, your matrix looks or if your projector looks flipped or upside down then try changing one of these and that might fix it but to get the resolution that you need, I've tested this and this works and it is the same resolution so it's um, uh, like 16.9 um, so it's the same as TVs just the resolution is a little lower. You want to set it to the sh number of strings to 176 and then the node the string to 96. So this gives you a resolution that's just a, um, uh, a little bit lower than um, than uh, HD so it's a little higher than VGA but just a little lower than um, HD I'm pretty sure and then something else that you can use that's pretty handy is correct aspect ratio this will make sure that it is the correct size and actually that is not set up right I think I set this up wrong the number of strings need to be 96 and the number of uh, nodes per string needs to be 176 I think now click correct aspect ratio and this will give you the correct aspect ratio you can make it bigger but don't stretch it this way because now it's going to be the wrong size so just hit correct aspect ratio again and this will give it the correct size so the top bottom the 
bottom and top to the left and right ratio is the same as a TV. So this is how you would set it up and make sure the direction is horizontal and starting location is top left. Try that first. If it doesn't work and your picture is flipped or upside down, come back and change it. Now I'm going to change the name of this to projector. And then the rest of the settings, you really don't need to change on here. So that's how you set up the projector on here. So I'm going to click save now. And I'll add a little video on top of it for you. So I'm going to come over to Sequencer. And um, uh, let me just set this up. I don't keep the effect assistant up there. And we're going to hit New Sequence. And when you do add video, if you want audio to be with it, you can't like just add the video clip and the audio. What you have to do is the audio that you add up here and the video that is down here you have to um uh, adjust them and make sure that they're perfectly in sync to make the video not be delayed i had some things where i didn't change that and it did look a little delayed and you might even be able to notice it if you pay attention in the videos of the light show but for this i'm just going to do animation and i won't do any audio and then when you are doing a projector um, uh, the frames per second can really change how you set it up. 20 frames per second, that will make your file sizes smaller and your render times lower. But then your picture, your videos will be can be really choppy. So what I do is I hit 40 frames per second. It is going to take longer and the file sizes will be bigger. But it can be worth the wait to make the video look better. Plus, I set my um, sequences to 40 frames per second by default anyway, because my um, uh, sequences have really fast effects, and if it was 20 frames per second, it would look funny. So, just click um, 40 frames per second if you want to do that, or 20, whatever you want. And then you can hit all models, empty, or Christmas view. Um, actually, Christmas view should be in there. I did make a change to this. This would be in here. It would be empty or all models. Just hit all models, and quick start. It will give you a 30 second track. And now let me go ahead and look for a video that I can test on here. So now what you want to do is you're going to want to add a video effect. So first you're going to want to set a timing track though so you can get the video to fit in the right way you want. So let me just put a, a timing mark right there by pushing T. And then you're going to look up here and you can also add pictures to a matrix if you want to. And you can use that with this picture effect and pictures also work with GIF so if you had GIFs that you wanted to use you can um, use the picture thing but then there's also a video effect so you're gonna want to drag this video effect onto matrix and you will get a lot of settings on here and I'll go over all of them in a minute but the first one that you're gonna want to look for is a video and you're gonna want to browse uh, for a video so let me go find a video that I can use that's within a, this time so the video I went and grabbed was a video that I used for the intro last year for the light show and it's actually 46 seconds long um 46.044 so I'm gonna change the time on here to make this exactly equal so I'll change that to 46 point what did I say uh point zero zero four so 46 point zero four four and then I'll just stretch this out all the way as far as it needs to go about that length and now um i have the house preview and it's on my other monitor i'm not recording it right now but i will show you that in a minute so once you have this picked you can take a look at your house preview and i'll drag this over there in a minute and um uh one second so here is um if it'll play um, and it doesn't it doesn't look like it wants to play and I didn't want to put that there. Let me move it over here So this is the intro that I had for the light show and it's playing on the matrix and actually everything on it looks good So if you go back and look at the videos of the two main Christmas light shows, this is the intro that I um, uh, used so um, uh, once you have the video on here, and if it looks right, it doesn't look upside down, that means that you got the first part to work. But there are some other parts that you have to, um, fix before you can do this. So, um, you have a, the start time, so you can set if it wants to be delayed for the start time, and you can set the duration for it. 
and the duration treatment this means normal so what will happen is it will go through the video and then if there's any extra a video if the video effect is longer than the actual video when the video is over it will put a blue screen so you can hit normal but no blue so when the video is over it will go black you can loop the video you could um, make it go slow or fast manual or manual loop I usually pick normal no blue or loop those are the two I usually use for this one I'll just choose normal no blue um, but sometimes you can set the speed if you do manual and then you can hit maintain aspect ratio and then you can crop the left and right so if I was to crop the right and then play it and now it's not showing up for some reason and this can happen sometimes and it will be very frustrating because you'll be working on a sequence and all of a sudden it doesn't show up what you have to do is push render now this is only a 46 second clip and let's see how long it takes to render it so um, it shows you the status down here of how long it's taking so if it was just a normal 46 second clip with my new light show layout it would it would be done already it would take about five seconds but with long videos it could take a while and this one is actually moving very quick so it only took 17 seconds and it shows you down here but if you play it now you could crop the right and now it's not playing again so now you have to render it again and this can sometimes happen when you're doing it and it can be very frustrating every time you make a change to the video you have to render it and if you get up to like five ten minute long videos it you will literally want to scream when this happens because then you have to wait for it to render so it looks like it's done it was a little quicker let's play it and now you can see the rights a little cropped and it looks funny and if I change it it doesn't want to show up again so um You'll have to re-render it again and just keep doing that over. So I'll render it one more time. I have the video all set up on here. And that's basically everything you need to do on the x lights part. The next part is going over to FPP and setting that up. And then uh, that's basically it. And then just testing it, seeing if anything's wrong, and going back and checking it. So that's rendered. I'm going to save it. And I'll just call it test. And that is now saved. So um, we can now minimize this and come over here to FPP. And I'm going to be showing you this if you're using it in standalone mode without master remote. Um, uh, I might sh have a video in the future using FPP master remote. But right now I'll just use it in standalone. And if you want to use master remote and you already know how to, you can set this up on your remote. But the main settings that you have to do in here is the first one is to come over here to FPP settings and then come over to audio video and then come down here to where it says default video output device. You want to make sure that this is set to HDMI. Most of the time it will be unless you changed it or did something else. So if it's already saved like that, you don't need to do anything else or change it. Um, but if you did want the video though to let's say comma on over an actual pixel matrix let's or a, a panel thing that you made and it was a pretty big panel you could select that on here so it doesn't come out of the hdmi part it will send it as pixel data to the controller and then the controller can set it send it out however it wants but if you're using a projector or a tv select hdmi next um if that's already saved you shouldn't need to save it or anything or reboot um the next thing you want to do is come over to the system and you're going to want to hit force HDMI display. This will make sure that if for some reason your projector is not detected automatically or it is not turned on when you turn on FPP, it will um, connect to it still. So you're just going to click that and it will ask for you to reboot, but you don't have to do that just yet. The other one that you might want to check off is blank screen on startup. So when you turn on the Raspberry Pi, it will show it's logging information while it is booting for the first two minutes over the projector screen so random text will come up over the screen saying it's boot status if you don't want that to show up because there'll be people at your light show then just click that and they'll just make the screen black but i like to leave it on because i like uh i start my show 10 minutes i turn on everything 10 minutes before the show starts so no one's there Plus, if there's a problem with my projector and I need to see what's going on, it will show me the log information over the video. So that's kind of a good thing. 
So that's all you need to do on the settings side. And then you're going to hit reboot. Okay. And you can let it reboot. And then once it's done rebooting, um, uh, the next step is going to uh, um, go in uh, set and set the output side of it. So I think we're done booting. So the next thing you're going to do is come over here to input output setup and go to channel outputs. And then it will show you your channel outputs. I already had one set up for the little video I showed you at the beginning of this video for the 50 subscribers. That's um, uh, was right here. Uh, then you can also come over to other. So regular lights would be set up on the E131, Artnet, or DDP um, side. Pi pixel strings. That is if you have actual pixels on the actual Pi, not over um, Ethernet onto another controller. So you can set up what you want for there. LED panels as if you attach panels to the Pi. Um, you can read all this and set that up if you want. I don't know any of these settings. And then you're going to want to come over the other. And then you're going to hit add. And then you're going to select the output type. And you have to make sure that your... Um, uh, I've had problems with this if your um, uh, monitor, TV, or projector is not plugged in when you set this up. The setting that you need sometimes does not show up. So you want to make sure that that's plugged in just to make sure nothing else goes on. And you're going to come and hit Virtual Matrix. And then uh, once you um, uh, click this, some uh, settings will show up and uh, you can uh, set these uh, um, as you need to the start channel you're gonna want to set this to the start, start channel and X light so if you come over here since there's only one thing the start channel is one and the end channel is 50,688 so it's just um, on start channel one so you have that set and then you want to set the width to the width of a, the matrix however you set it up if you set it to be HD or full HD and you wanted to go crazy and have it really um, uh, dense then set it up how you would in here. But since I set up mine 17696, I gotta put in those values. So I have 176 for the width, and then the height is 96. And then once you have this set, you wanna make sure that the channel count is equal to the one in X line. So you have 50,688 on the Pi. Let's go over here. 50,688 on the um X on X lights. So that's I'm not correct. Then the color order, sometimes you might need to change this. Um, this just sets um, uh, how the colors are set on there. If you leave it at RGB and then for some reason um, you uh, the colors are wrong, like red is green, blue is um, red, and then other random stuff like that, you could change it to BGR. But I think it should be RGB. Invert, that will mean that it will flip the screen. So... Um, I'm not going to check that off, but if the screen does need to be flipped, then I will check that. The port, this tells which HDMI port to send it out of. It only allows you to select um, HDMI port 1. But um, the HDMI ports are set up kind of funny on the Pi. They don't call them number 1 and number 2. They call it zero and um, uh, is HDMI port 0 and HDMI port 1. So it will only come out of the first HDMI port, which is HDMI 0. So you can only select that one. And then uh, scaling, you can just leave that at hardware. And now, also make sure to hit active, because if you don't click active, then it won't work. And push save. It will say, um, settings have changed, FPPD, restart required. Okay, restart it. That only takes a couple of seconds to do. And then once it's restarted, we will upload the file that we just made to test it. So, content setup now, and file manager is where you're going to want to come. I already have some files on here that I don't need anymore, so I'm just going to hold control and click to select multiple and delete them. And I don't need this audio file on here, so delete that. So sequences, since we have no audio, all we need to do is add the sequences. And um, so I don't have to upload it over here. There is another tool you can use on x -Lite. Um, Come over here to Tools and FPP Connect. It will discover your FPP. And it will show you the host name and the IP address. C click the correct one. And then you can select what to output. Um, so you could set the um, media and models. There is no media and I don't really think I need to upload that. But I'll just leave it on here. And then just click what you want to upload. What songs you want to do. And um, 
the only one that I want to upload is the test. So I'll just hit that and click upload. It'll upload it for me so I don't need to go into my files and look for it and upload it that way. So that makes it easier. It says not responding, but okay, it's responding now. Just give it a second. It'll transfer it. Since the screen is really big though, it could take a while to transfer it, but that was pretty quick. So it should now be uploaded over here. So if we refresh the page, the test sequence is there. Now you're going to come over here to playlist. And I already have a playlist named test. Um, it has sequences on it, but I can remove those because I don't want those on here. So, um, uh, pl edit playlist entry. I want sequence only because I don't have any media. And then the sequence test. Hit add. Simple as that. It's on here. And, um, that should basically be it. And then you're just going to hit save. And now, hopefully, if you did do everything right, you should be able to come to the status page and you should be able to push play and the sequence on the projector should start. So let's go take a look at that. So I'm not quite sure where to project this because I don't have a lot of room, but um, I put it on this wall here and let me turn off my light. So this is kind of a good sign. This means the FPP did recognize that there's a projector so it's basically doing the boot up screen so it has Falcon Player OS image 4.4 um, I don't know why it says that I have 4.6 but um and then it says the IP address of it and I not sure why it isn't showing uh, why it is showing that's not supposed to be but that's that screen and then if you use the focus you can um, uh, Obviously, you make it more focus or out of focus. Since it's really close, I have to make the thing stick out really far. And I can tilt it up and down. So if I wanted to lift it up there, I can make it look more straight. But since it's down there for now, I'll just leave it like that. So now I got to figure out um, why this is doing it. Let's see what happens when I play a sequence. But actually, before I do that, I want to see what happens when I log in. I have my super cool light up keyboard right here um, plugged into the Pi, and when I type, it shows up on the screen. And I could just type random stuff. So, um, I don't know what happened. Okay, so, um, to log in, there is the default username and password. I still haven't changed it and I really need to but if this is your first time using Falcon and playing you want to log in let me turn that on so I can see the keys the login um is FPP and the password is Falcon and then it can it shows you some other text you can access the UI by typing HTTP um uh, colon forward slash forward slash FPP dot local or just your IP address but now I'm into the command um, line now on here and that's not quite where I want to be I want to be I want to show video so I have to try and figure this out now and it's really confusing so now I'm going to see what happens if I attempt to um, play a sequence see if it will change what the screen looks like I have a Falcon Player up on my tablet right here, and I'm going to play um, uh, the test sequence that we made with the video. I hit play. Okay, it at least makes the screen go black, but it's not playing the video, though. So we are getting there. That Oh, there we go. Okay, it actually played the video, and it is um, perfect. It, it looks a little pixely, but that's probably because I didn't make it that dense. I could try and make it more dense but if I do it might be too much for the computer so or for the Raspberry Pi but it's completely forward so I guess we and it's not upside down so I guess we set up everything correctly and uh, I'm gonna stop this now and um, and just to make sure we have everything right I'm gonna go under display testing you could still use display testing in FPP which is this page right here and if I turn on testing it shows a bunch of uh, different RGB colors, 
Um, which is what it's supposed to do, so that's good. Um, and then I can make it look like lines. I can fill it in with one color, that's white. Um, it looks a little yellow, but that's probably because it's against the green wall. And then I can make it blue, really blue. Um, completely green, completely red. And then, uh, I can make it cycle between, uh, the colors. So this means that it is set up correctly though, so this is a very good sign. So now the next thing that I'm going to attempt to do is show you how you can use audio if you wanted to run the audio through the projector. So let's go back onto my computer. So I'm back here on x Lights, and I have the same video clip here and let me drag over the house preview for my other monitor. I'm going to put it right there. Um. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an audio file to this so we can test um, uh, the audio too to make sure the audio works from the Pi. And the reason why the login screen showed up and then I played the video and it went away was actually because of one setting that I showed you about. If you go back here and you go on to status control and back to FPP settings and then you go back to system. Um, uh, the blank screen on startup, I, um, uh, this is why it showed up. I didn't check this and I actually said why you, um, uh, if you check it, what would happen? Since I didn't check it, it showed the boot screen, but if you checked it, that would not show up. It would be blank until you started to play a video on it, but I actually like to leave that there just in case something's wrong so I can see what's going on. And then if I really have to, and I don't want, and I can't log in through the web UI, I can plug a keyboard out into the Raspberry Pi and then just type in and see what's going on on the projector. Um, now, if you didn't check this and uh, you left the boot up screen showing, it would show until you play the first video and then once the show starts and the first video plays, it will never show again until you shut it off and turn it back on. So I'm going to leave that unchecked though. So that was why that was happening. And then also one other test I want to do is see if I can make the projector denser because that was the same resolution I used last year. But I want to see if I can make it just a little denser because when you're up close, even though most people wouldn't be, it looks really pixely. I'm just going to see how, if it looks any better far away if you do it the other way. But now I'm going to go and find the audio file and uh, so I'm going to go to sequence settings and change the sequence type to media and then select my audio file so I got I have went and selected the audio file it's right here and when I change that the screen doesn't show up so I have to just do a quick render hopefully it won't take too long and if I do change the resolution higher like I want to this render time would take much longer if you click it you can see details if you had a bunch of props it'd show you which one they're rendering right now and uh, once that is finished, I will show you the clip. I'm not going to show you it with the audio for the first part because it has copyright music in it and I don't want to get copyright strike. But in the middle, it won't be able to hear it because there's voice um, over it. So here's a look at the house preview on the projector through here. Bridgeport's Brightest Lights Christmas Light Show brought to you by the Bill Arleys. I'm Nicholas and I'm the creator of this light show. And I'm the sister Grace. So this is the with the audio, and now I'm going to show you two different ways um, uh, to use the audio, either through the projector or just a regular way through the Raspberry Pi. And uh, let's go back and take a look at the projector now. Okay, so right now I have, uh, I'm using the tripod for that light, which I usually use so you can see everything better, because my other one's too big to fit around here. So there's only going to be one light here, it might look a little funny. So the first way that I'm going to show you to do it is using the audio out of the Pi with a sound blaster. Uh, not sure how well you can see that, but uh, sound blaster. I'm not going to show you how to do it out of the audio thing because that's simple. It's basically the same way. So I'm just going to show you this first. Then I have speakers up there and on either side of this. Then I'm going to play the audio out of. And then after that, I'll show you how to play the audio out of the actual projector. So... I'll just plug the sound blaster in and then I'm going to uh, hopefully have enough wire because I need to pick this 
up and put it up here so it can reach the audio cable into my speakers. So let me plug this in to the headphone jack on there and we have to go back to my computer so I can switch it over to the sound blaster so let's go do that. So we're back on here quickly just come to FPP settings, audio video, audio output device and uh, for the sound blaster play 3 it should show up right here all you need to do is click that if you didn't have a sound blaster and you wanted to use the audio the 3.5 mm, millimeter audio jack then select pi onboard audio but i'm using the sound blaster play 3 uh, output mixer device leave it to speaker and now all you have to do is restart at ppd now that that's changed i'm gonna turn on my speakers and the volume for um, uh, the Raspberry Pi is set to 79 and uh, audio will be playing in just a second so now let me move you back over so you can see the projector screen so right now it's complete darkness I'm going to turn on my projector and then it shows you the projector screen let me just adjust it and then it says it's connected to HDMI and then the screen should be black since I didn't restart, or since I didn't reboot at PPD, it shouldn't show the boot text again. So now that's showing up, and like I said, audio is going to come out of the speakers. This is how most people will either have it with their projector plugged in to their Raspberry Pi, um, uh, and then the audio coming out of the Raspberry Pi to something else. But if for some reason you did want to use the audio on the projector, we'll show you that in a minute. Now I'm going to go to status play page and I'm going to play the video. So it does look like it's working. I just turned down the volume. Um, so this is pretty good. The audio is coming out of there. I'll turn it back up so you can listen to it. So everything is working on there and now I'm going to stop it. So that's the first way of doing it. And now there are um, one, there's one other main way that can be di divided up into two different parts. So now let's hop, hop back onto my computer. Okay, I'm back onto the computer. Um, audio output device again, just select that. And this time you're going to select HDMI 1. And uh, output mixer device leave it at HDMI that's your only choice and now the audio should be sent uh, um, uh, over the HDMI cord and just one reminder if for some reason you're using the HDMI cord but then your projector only accepts VGA in and you have a, a way to convert it VGA does not um, uh, work with audio it only uses video so if it's VGA you cannot use audio over VGA it has to be HDMI and only HDMI works with audio and video going over it so now let's go back on over we're back over here to the projector and since I changed it um the audio should come out of the speakers on the uh, projector so I'm gonna play the same sequence and let's see what happens so I'm not sure how well you can hear it but the audio is coming out of the projector but it's very quiet let me turn it up So now the audio is coming out of the um, projector and it is working perfectly. I just muted it. So the other little way that you can use it is instead of having the audio come straight out of the speakers because that's no one's really going to be able to hear that from the road. Um, you can plug a something else into the projector like an FM transmitter or something else. So let me show you that. So I just have the projector on a little stand here. Um, like I showed you earlier, there is an audio video spot on this side. I can't turn it because the wire is going up to my speakers since it's still sitting up there and it was plugged into there. But what you can do is I can unplug it and take this back down so that I can move it. And I'm going to, uh, I don't really have any speakers that can plug it in to there except for one tiny one so let me find that. 
Okay, there is a problem with the speaker I wanted to use. It is um, like completely broken. But I'll just show you how it would have worked. There is two audio, or there is two 3.5 millimeter audio jacks here. One says AV, that it's this second one. That's for audio video for that one cord that I have. And then the second one is for headphones. So you could plug an FM transmitter into here. So instead of the audio coming out of the speakers when it's coming through the HDMI cord, it would be coming out of there into whatever device is plugged into there. But not all projectors have that. This is just with mine. So you might have to use something else. And like I said again, if for some reason your projector doesn't have HDMI and it has VGA and you have it plugged in with a VGA cord, um, the audio will not go through it because um, VGA, like I said, only transmits video. But if you are going very old school and your projector only works with RCA cables, which would be a very old projector, this is the one plug that plugs in uh, to this first one here. You would have to have some sort of converter to convert it from a micro HDMI from the Raspberry Pi or a regular HDMI if you have a Pi 3. And then this does, as long as your converter transmits the audio through it, this does transmit audio because you have the video on the yellow one and then speakers left and right on the red and white one. So if you are using RCA cables, it will work, but VGA, it will not. So that's basically it, how to use projectors in your light show. Hopefully this will help make your light show even cooler by adding a new element. And I highly recommend adding projectors, not only just for adding video and other things. You can also say things on it, like your radio station to tune to, um, uh, a Facebook page if you have one, a YouTube channel if you have one. So they are a really cool element. And now I did want to show you my projector box that I have up close and all the different things about it, but I realized it was buried. So. If you do want to see more details about the projector box, check out this video up here and it will show you um, uh, all the different things about the projector. It was the first video that I did make um, with me in it and it was the behind the scenes light show. So skip to this time in the video when you get there and it will show you all the things about the projector box. Now there will be a part two to this video. The next video I will be making um, uh, about different things you can use on projectors or TV screens if you did set it up with a TV screen such as little videos you can do like the one I showed you that I made for my intro and then some other text things that you could put on it and how to put different videos on your light show like if you had a, the Frozen movie and you wanted to put the video of it on there and things like that. So thank you for watching and if you enjoyed the video subscribe and leave a like and don't forget to hit the notifications bell so you get notified every time I upload a new video and thank you again we gave me past 50 subscribers. Thank you all for subscribing. And I will see you in the next video.